present and for us to lean and support on one another. And please know that all are welcome. You don't have to commit forever. You can come once. You can come every time we hold it. It's um, really up to you and when you need that kind of support. Well, many of you got the message. I hope you did at home. It's Pentecost. Lots of you have your red on today. And it's so fun to be able to get out all the red um, and to decorate in the sanctuary too, to celebrate when the Holy Spirit was received and what really we've marked as the birthday of the church. Charity, you're here. <laughs> It's so wonderful to have you here. We know that you sing at other churches. We know you sing around the world. And it's so wonderful that you can be here and celebrating with us today. And I'm sorry, I've really taken advantage of you today and your voice. Wait till you hear the music. It's gonna be amazing. We have to fill this place today indeed with the Holy Spirit. So I don't know where you are I don't know what your day has been or what your morning has been or your week, but this I believe, that as we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit, it will be different after you've been here. Let's take a nice deep breath here and at home, center and draw ourselves into a place of worship and being present. Oh God, we give you thanks as we celebrate today and we invite the Spirit in this place to rest on each one of us, to connect and unite us together as the body, to give us courage and to grant us your gifts and fruits. We open ourselves now to your Spirit and its movement as we worship together. In your sacred name we pray, amen. You may be, remain seated as we just meditate on this first song of the Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of Ah! 
The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Let us join together responsively in the call to community. A wind from God blew over the face of the waters, and the voice of God spoke from a burning bush. Jesus breathed peace on the disciples, and the Spirit of God, like little flames, rested on all who gathered. The church was born, God's church, so God's Spirit moves among us this day. Let us worship God. Let us indeed stand and feel that spirit and move with shackles. Please stand, all who are able. may be seated. We take time in the worship service to acknowledge what it means for us to be humans. God of fire and wind, we confess that we have missed the moments and the movement of your spirits and in our lives and in our world. We have not always been a spirit-led church. We've not pursued your anointing or your sanctifying presence. We've not lived in holiness. Forgive us, we pray, and free us to life in the Spirit. 
Friends, hear the good news. We will be replenished with streams of living water and the presence of the spirits. We prepare now for the hearing of the scripture reading that Gil and Fernie are gonna lead us in today. And Abby, and Abby too. Good morning, First Church. So Acts 2, 1 to 13, when the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking uh, Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elam, um, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, are all parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with the new wine. John 15, 26, 27, 16, 7, 12, and 13. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father's spirit and of truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send them to you. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own. He will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare you to the things that are to come. Buenos días. Lectura Sagrada, Hechos 2, versos 1 a 13. Cuando llegó el día de Pentecostés, estaban todos juntos en el mismo lugar. De repente, vino del cielo un ruido como el de un violan, violente ráfaga de viento y llenó toda la casa, llenó toda la casa donde estaban reunidos. Se les aparecieron entonces unas lenguas como de fuego que se repartieron y se posaron sobre cada uno de ellos. Todos fueron llenos del Espíritu Santo y comenzaron a hablar en diferentes lenguas. Según el Espíritu les concedía expresarse. Estaban de vista en Jerusalén judíos piadosos procedentes de todas las naciones de la tierra. Al oír aquel buicillo, se agol agolparon y quedaron todos pasmados porque cada uno de uno los escuchaba hablar en su propio idioma. idioma. Desconcertados y maravillados decían, ¿no son galileos todos estos que estaban hablando? ¿Cómo es que cada uno de nosotros los oía hablar en su lengua materna? Partos, medos y elamitas, habitantes del Mesopotamia, de Judea y de Capadocia, del Ponte y de Asia, de Frigia y de Panfilia, de Egipto y de las regiones de Libia cercanas a Sirene, visitantes llegados de Roma, 
judíos y prosélitos, cretenses y árabes. Todos por igual los oímos proclamar en nuestra propia lengua las mar maravillas de Dios. Desconcertados y perplejos se preguntaban, ¿qué quiere decir esto? Otros se burlaban y, di y decían, los, lo que pasa es, es que estaban borrachos. Juan 15, versos 26 a 27 y Juan 16, versos 7, 12 y 13. Cuando, cuando venga el Consolador, yo los enviaré de parte del Padre, el Espíritu de verdad, que procede el Padre. Él testificará acerca de mí, y también ustedes darán testimonio, porque han estado conmigo desde el principio. Pero les digo la verdad, le conviene que me vaya porque... Si no lo hago, el Consolador no vendrá a ustedes. En cambio, si me voy, se lo enviaré a ustedes. Muchas cosas me quedan aún por decirles que por ahora no podrá, podrían soportar. Pero cuando venga el Espíritu de la verdad, Él los uh, guiará a toda la verdad, porque no hablará por su propia cuenta sino que dirá solo lo que oiga y les anunciará las cosas por venir. Palabra de Dios. Everyone's really happy that they were not asked to read the scripture reading. You had to do all those names and not anybody else. You did a great job. It's not easy to, to rush through all those names. I invite the children to come to the screens at home to join me for a moment with you. Um, I've brought a, um, a bag today, and maybe you like things wrapped up, or you don't mind if it's a gift bag or if it's something else. It means that there might be a present or a surprise inside, and usually we get these sort of things when it's our birthday. So I've got some birthday balloons that I've brought with me, and Mike brought some candles from home, so if somebody comes over and is having a birthday, you can put, these are not enough candles for most of us in this room. I don't think so. But it's fun to have a birthday and to blow out candles and get presents and to really celebrate. It's a, it's a real rite of passage. It's a milestone. And even as I get older, I still celebrate. And I don't mind if anybody knows what my age is because we celebrate, or at least I do, being, being alive and having another year to be here and to experience life and one another. Well, today in the church, it's our birthday as we celebrate Pentecost today. And the story goes that was read for us by Gil and Fernie, that there were people that were all together that believed and the Holy Spirit came to them. The Holy Spirit is not an easy thing to really understand. Um, and it's, it's more like air or breath or what is all around us that we can't see, um, but sustains and supports us. Scripture also says that it is the Spirit who gives us gifts and fruits. And so the ways in which we are gifted and we are talented in particular ways are from the Holy Spirit. And so as you think about what it means to celebrate a birthday, it's really about celebrating you and the gifts that you bring to the world. And in that way, you can remember that it is the Holy Spirit that has made you and given you those particular gifts. So I, if you were here, I would give you all a balloon, I'd give you a candle, we might even have cake, but anyway, on another day when we can do all of those things. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. And all of you for being children at heart. So we're going to sing and bring us back into the spirit with your spirit. Spirit God, not by might, not 
touch by power by your spirit God send your spirit
not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Not by not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, Nobody was ready anyway <laughs> after that. My favorite stories, they're when they go backwards in time or they jump time periods. One of my favorite stories is by Barbara Kingslover. It's called Prodigal Summer. Don't know if any of you have read it before but she weaves together three stories of human love within this larger tapestry of lives amid the Appalachian and farms of Southern Appalachia. What about this show? I used to watch This Is Us. Anybody watched it? I first watched it when it aired along with my daughter and then we kind of got out of sync and stopped watching for a while. The present day links with the past stories of the family's history. You have to keep up or you won't know if you are, what you are watching is the present or what already happened in the past. I always found that the recap at the beginning of the show to be a little bit pointless because sometimes the recap was last week, but last week was about something that happened years ago. So I could never figure out if I'd seen that episode or not. I'm going to reverse the sermon today. Just like stories that go backwards in time or switch around, we're going to begin in the present and we're going to work backwards until we get to the scripture reading. That's going to take a couple of thousand of years. So I hope you've had breakfast and have some stamina today. Today... We begin today in present time. Today is Pentecost, and I hope you can feel it through the spirit and the music and one another. The birthday of the church, the day that we celebrate the spirit and its coming. We're going to start here and go backwards to the book of Acts. So last week, when we talked about the story or the story, we said, is there really the story? And if there is, it has to align with the patterns that are true everywhere, like love and forgiveness and respect. We also know that the story is about the work of inclusion and acceptance. So from last week, we read a portion from the right of membership, which bears reminding today, we feel called to carry out Jesus' ministry of peace and social justice, compassion and liberation for all people. We do this without regard to age, race, ethnicity or national origin, physical, mental, emotional ability or different ability, gender, marital status, gender identity or sexual orientation, socioeconomic background or circumstance, political affiliation or immigration status. We seek to honor each person's journey, authentic self and story, our theme for May. We offer ourselves as an inclusive community 
in which the gospel of God's love for all people is honored and practiced. We affirm this church as a place of hope and a community of welcome to all in Christ's name. Enough said. But how did we get here? How did we get to that place where you could write such a statement like that? What's happened along the way in our own church history that has brought us to this place on the journey? I'm starting backwards, don't forget. These are some things and some stuff that we have declared as a church. Did you know that you called your first female solo pastor in February? Someone pointed this out to me. I didn't know until months later that there was some ceiling that had been broken. Amen, do I hear from some women out there? In February, we became wise. In December, we declared just peace. In 2017, a sanctuary and immigrant welcoming congregation in 2003, open and affirming. Hundreds of pastors and leaders who have gone before us. In each season, something new God has called us to be and to do as a church. People visit the church. Some join, some leave, some move. Some leave when there's a new pastor or a decision or a new direction that is unfavorable to them. When did you first come to First Church? Today, maybe, last Sunday, a year ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago? And what drew you to that visit? And what keeps you coming back? Or if it's your first time online or present here, what would keep you coming back? How many other churches have you worshiped in? Some of you have a lot of fingers. You need to use your toes too, probably. How many churches have you joined? And what is it about this church that draws you back? Call it out and write it in the chat. What is it that draws you back? Friends, love. Diversity, acceptance, family, music, charity, <laughs> the band. <laughs> what did you say, Jason? Non judgmental. Thank you, Marlon. Mission. I asked a few people this week. And I hope people are writing in the chat and saying so too. They said, I come because I have to, to stay focused. I come because the church walks their talk. I came because of Pastor Steve. I came because of Pastor James. Some people's story might be, I came because my parents brought me here. I came because I'm in recovery. What is it that we value at First Church that keeps us coming back again and again? And you've named so many of those things that we are inclusive and accepting, accepting and loving and justice-centered and focused and all the things of designations of open and affirming and wise and just peace. As we do church now, present day, I think sometimes it's like the Kingsolver book of different people's stories and then one day they all meet. Sometimes it's like the show, This Is Us. We live in the present day, but we know that our history shapes and informs who we are. And the history will also tell us. It's going to tell us about some of our behaviors and patterns that need to change going forward. It's going to tell us about how we relate to one another now. In 1917, this church became a place of worship, and it looked like this. It was first 
started as a congregational Bible school by Samuel Lind of the Home Missionary Society. About 35 members met first at a bungalow at Portland and Third Streets. They soon chose then to become First Congregational Church June the 25th, 1917. And they bought land nearby. In 1919, the parish house was built. And the basic sanctuary that we're in now was built in 1942 and expanded in 1952. The entire campus was complete in 1968. The name changed to First Congregational when we joined the UCC in 1960. Prior to that, it was a Congregationalist church. I don't know if you know this, but our steeple looks a little bit short there. And now, with all of the high rises around us, our steeple's bigger, but it looks really small in the midst of the city. Sometimes it's hard to view it unless you get the right angle in the city to see that tall steeple. And this lacks picture in so many, um, thanks to Brian Kelly for his stunning photography. This is us. This is our church story, and you are a part of it. And the church is messy. It isn't easy to sustain itself or to keep focused on purpose and calling or discover what our what is in any given season. But I need to say that the church is even far more than just messy because the Christian church is also linked to abuse and rejection and judgment and hypocrisy. The Christian church is linked to genocide and war, to suffering and atrocities unthinkable that have resulted in spiritual trauma and much more. And it's important to name these as part of our history as we continue the work of conciliation. The church has caused many people to walk away and never come back. As I was coming to church today, as I was seeing people out and about in the beautiful weather and walking and hiking, and I thought, I wonder if their church starts later or, or they're just not going. Or their walk and hike today is church for them where they meet God. To the relief of many, um, we are not going to recite the entire history of the church now, even though I joked about it before. We're gonna move back in time further and go to the book of Acts from our scripture reading and the story of Pentecost, the forming of community in what today we now call church. So according to the book of Acts, which was written by the same author of the Gospel of Luke, we have the story of Pentecost, where the suddenly from heaven there came a rush, like a violent wind, and it filled everyone who was seated. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one. And then they spoke in different languages, and somehow, as they heard those languages, they heard them speaking about God's deeds of power. And they didn't know how it could be possible. And the end of the scripture reading, which nobody laughed at, is they thought, ha, huh, these people must be filled with wine. You did. Good. What changed for them, do you think, on Pentecost? To have this community experience of receiving the Holy Spirit, of listening to each other in varying languages and being able to understand one another. They seem to be aware of their differences and at the same time of everything that they have in common. They seem to have been brought together. Isn't that the work of what the Spirit does? The Spirit is counselor, comforter, advocate, our very breath 
The Spirit heals, unites, ignites, comforts, brings peace, and gives us courage. So how did they become a community after that experience? In the book of Acts chapter 2, it tells us of what they tried to do as they came together. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who were believed were together, and they had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all that had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home. They ate with food, with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to the number those who were being saved. I don't know what was happening 2,000 years ago. I don't know what was happening in their community, but something happened after Pentecost that brought them together that they prayed and they ate together and they began to grow in numbers. We can only respond to what's happening now in our time and how God is calling us. So now, from today to the past, let's go future to end. Stay with me for a minute as we jump to that. And that's the question, the church story. How is God calling us? Because we want to discern our what as a church now. Together, we're going to work through a process called SOAR in October. And we're laying that groundwork now for our visioning and dreaming and discerning of God's calling as a church. SOAR stands for, and there's a little booklet that will help us through that process, strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results. I like the last one the best. I can't wait. There's a few of us who are, are starting that groundwork now with the conference minister, and everybody's going to have an opportunity to help in this conversation of what is our what right now, not back in Pentecost, not in the book of Acts, not that community, but ours, downtown Phoenix, right now, 2021 and 2022 and onwards. Why? Because God's still speaking. Jesus, as it is recorded in the Gospel of John, he promises that the Advocate or the Holy Spirit is going to reveal even more truth. Jesus says it's even better that I go so that the Advocate can come and speak to you. That Holy Spirit, that Advocate's still speaking today. How do I usually conclude services? Do you remember? Or is it becoming rote already? Now to God, who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or imagine, according to the power at work within us. We can't do it alone, and we can't do it without God. It will be God through us as we discern together. I'm going to close with this beautiful poem that Jan Richardson offers us, and she wrote this poem for Pentecost. She describes it this way, about breathing together. This is the blessing we cannot speak by ourselves. This is the blessing we cannot summon by our own devices, cannot shape to our own purpose cannot bend to our will. This is the blessing that comes when we leave behind our aloneness 
when we gather together, when we turn toward one another. This is the blessing that blazes among us when we speak the words strange to our ears, when we finally listen into the chaos, when we breathe together at last. That breathing is the very word, the ruach, the breath, the spirit, the wind that flows in us, between us, and around us, that tells us as a church what our what is and how this church story continues. So we open ourselves now and we invite the Holy Spirit in to fill us up. You provide the fire, God. We'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirits. And we will open up inside. You say, you provide the fire, you provide the fire, I provide the sacrifice, I provide the sacrifice, you provide the spirit, you provide the spirit, I will open up and I will open up inside, feel me up God, feel me up God feel me up God feel me up feel me up God feel me up God feel me up God feel me up feel me up God feel me up God feel me provide the sacrifice come on you provide the spirit you provide the spirit 
inside. I will open up inside. I will open up inside. Say it again. You provide the fire. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. I'll provide. Come on, you provide the spirit. You provide. I will open up the side. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me. Come on, if you believe it, raise your hands. Let us pray. Oh God, you've created us for relationship, to be connected, to be in community, to support and to love, to give and take between each other, to create places of inclusion, acceptance, forgiveness place to find home, to be ourselves, to share our stories, and a place where we can find our spiritual grounding, our sure foundation, and to be vulnerable in a place called worship to open us up to your living, breathing spirit. 
to get vulnerable knowing that sometimes we feel pretty empty and we need to be filled again, that we give so much, that we get stuck in our heads, in our thinking, in our work, in our tasks, in our doing. And you are available as close as our breathing to fill us again. Remind us this day, God, that all is with you and through you. So we commit ourselves together as a spiritual community and as this church to asking, how are you calling us anew? How are we building upon what happened in the past, where we are now and where you are leading us? How can we get on board with your mission to heal the world? We are a part of a bigger body of people, of humanity, of creation. On a journey with one another to create space to hear you, God, and one another. This is our story, each of our stories. This is the story. And this is the story of what it means to try to be church. And through your spirits, why we be guided forward into our future. We give you thanks for your gifts, for your goodness, for your faithfulness, and the ways that you have sustained us, and the way that Christ has been our teacher. We pray together an adapted prayer from the Aramaic together. O oh, birther, Father, Mother of the cosmos, focus your light within us, make it useful, create your reign of unity now, your one desire then acts with ours, as in all light, so in all forms, grant us what we need each day in bread and insight. Loose the cords of mistakes binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' guilt. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. From you is born all ruling will, the power and the life to do, the song that beautifies all. From age to age, it renews. I affirm this with my whole being. Truly, power to these statements may be the ground from which all my actions grow. Amen. I invite you to a time to think about your own generosity and in the ways we, we have been generous as a church. And if you give to the church, you will receive in the last um, month's statements as well as a letter saying what we've been about. One of the things to highlight is from January to April, almost 1,500 lunches from the office. And um, along with those are not just lunches, but hygienes and socks and underwear and other things as well to our unsheltered friends um, who come to the door in need. And, um, Actually, Kitty is the organizer and is here today. You could say, hey, I want to do that too um, and be a volunteer in that space. So thank you, Kitty, for the way that you organize everybody. And we celebrate um, that part and piece of what it means to be in downtown Phoenix and present um, with those who are unsheltered.
For those of you who would like to give who are in the sanctuary, there's offering plates at the doors. You can leave yours as you leave. And for those of you either here or online, you can also give through the Givelify app through setting up First Church as a payee or writing a check and mailing it to the church. This is the way that we are generous, and there are so many other ways to name as well. As we depart and leave today, we leave knowing that um, God is with us, that the Spirit abides and guides us, each and every one of us. And our closing song is a song that is um, by Aretha Franklin, which is just so fitting for charity as she did um, the Aretha Franklin tribute concerts, and some of us attended that as well. So Spirit in the Dark, we will close with today. Getting the spirit in the dark. Getting the spirit in the dark. People moving. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grooving. Are you getting the spirit?